Good morning, everyone. This is Chris Walls, a director's assistant. Uh, and this is a short course or clinic on the process of when you, when you first learn that you're going to get new uniforms or you know that you need new marching band uniforms, just how to get through that process from beginning to end. Uh, I have, have a bad habit of over explaining sometimes. So uh, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as possible. And then if you have questions, all of my contact information is on slide 21. Uh, also feel free to share this uh, if you are a band director. Feel free to share this with any of the decision makers, uh, be that a principal, superintendent, or if you have to get a booster club involved. And uh, then also for universities, if you need to fill some time in a methods class and you, uh, you, know, you need to fill the holes, you, we all know that you can't learn everything at the university, but if you need to use this or if you'd like me to even come out, uh, I've done that for several universities lately, so happy to do so. Lastly, I am recording at the park. It is a beautiful day here in Dallas. You're going to hear some planes and some kids, but I hope that's not too distracting. All right, let's do this. So we want to start with the purpose. Um, it, the purpose of this class is to provide all the decision makers with information they need to create a uniform that re represents for the school. Uh, for the program, for the community, uh, and we'll dive a little bit deeper into that. Uh, if you're a new school, maybe, maybe you don't have much of that yet. Uh, and if you've been around for a very long time, a you know, hundred years, you might have a lot of decision makers involved and a lot of people that you need to please on this uniform. Um, a lot of traditions may be involved. And then also we're going to outline, and this may be one of the most important things we talk about today, is outline a reasonable timeline uh, for when you need to get started on the designs and find the money and um, get delivery of the, the uniform, excuse me. What is the motive for your new uniform? Did your band grow? Since you got there, there were, there were 75 kids in the band and now there's, you see 125 in the next two years. Do you just need fill-in uniforms or is your band uniform growing so quickly that you might as well just redesign and, and get a new uniform now. You're, you're gonna spend just as much money doing that and you're gonna get the design you want. And that's something we can talk about later. I don't wanna dive too far into that. Uh, maybe you are in a large district and it's simply your turn. For example, I'm sitting in Dallas ISD right now and there are 20, 20 high schools here. And so I can tell you on their rotation, I can tell you right now in 2054, what bands are going to be designing that year. They have got it down to a science. They've been doing this a long time. And with a, a district this large, you have to be on a rotation. If you're in a, um, a one school town, uh, you're going to have a little bit more of a, of a uh, fight on your hands, let's say, trying to get new uniforms because you're, you don't have a rotation and the board members from 10, 12 years ago are not the same board members as before, but that's something we can talk about later. Condition, are they simply just worn out? Uh, these band uniforms are meant to, depending on how many times you perform a year, they're meant to last up to 15 years. I've seen that happen several times. I will say I talked to a band director in East Texas just the other day and uh, we started digging through the files at Fruhoff and learned that his uniforms were from 1992. Yes, 30 years ago. Uh, and thankfully, he's, he's now ready to start rocking and rolling and he's got the support to do so. I don't know how they pulled that off. They must have taken really good care of them. Then lastly is the design just dated. I see that a lot um, with some of the BOA bands especially where they they're get on a rotation of six to eight years and they're just um, really aggressive with their designs so that very well may be may be the situation for you who and what who are the decision makers is it just you uh, do you have to have a committee is the administration involved there's a lot of lucky schools uh, around me that it's just the band director. The band director has the final say. Um, but there's a lot of politics involved as well. Uh, sometimes you've got to have a committee of, of alumni and the tradition, and I'm kind of putting this slide all together, 
but tradition is a major thing. Uh, this is especially true for some of the older schools. Uh, I once taught at a school that's about 100 years old, and the alumni are very invested, which is a beautiful thing sometimes, but can become a bit of a burden when you're trying to come up with one design. Uh, also, and we'll talk about this a little bit later, when you're dealing with these types of poli this type of politics, if you get too many decision makers in place, people are gonna get their feelings hurt because they're gonna believe that their opinion is the right opinion. And when you don't accept certain aspects of their opinion or just completely throw it out, they're gonna get their feelings hurt. And then when that new uniform goes out on the field, they're going to be uh, talking poorly about it or being less excited. And we, you just don't want to create that from the beginning. So it would be my advice, if possible, to keep as few de decision makers in the process, um, if that's possible. So I want to jump into timeline real quick because it is so important. Uh, you're going to see two slides, uh, this one and the next. This one really talks about, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to read this for you. Uh, this one talks about our side, and that is Fruhoff uniforms. Our side is one to two weeks for construction specs. So that literally is your, when, once we go through the design process, the construction specs, and Sheila in our office is amazing. I don't know how she does it every day, but it is literally your custom made uniform written out line by line, no photos. She writes out every single detail. Um, I, I don't know how she does it, it's amazing. Uh, but that takes about one to two weeks. And that's, that's our burden, that's our part of the timeline. We really, that we can't get rid of that. Uh, then once the specs are written, we have the sample construction. These, it, it, this fluctuates a little bit, five, five weeks. I've even seen it at six weeks. I would, be, I would prepare for that if it's the busy season. So four to five weeks is our average. Uh, from, from the time that I request the sample for you, for you to receive it. And this is the longest part of the process um, before, except for the, the order and delivery, which is now, as you can see, up to 180 days. Uh, it's just all of this uh, supply chain stuff and where also the bands are growing, a lot more orders are coming in because we had two years of, of slowness. Uh, a lot of people are playing catch up. So I, and I expect it to, to remain up to 180 days, probably for the next, next couple of years. And it may never go back. You know, plan, plan, with the, plan, for the, plan for the worst and hope for the best, right? Okay, let's move on to the next slide where it gets a little bit more specific. Timeline, uh, this includes what you, with your timeline plus ours. So the first part is the design. Uh, many times this takes a day, uh, especially if we do some of the um, some of the design examples I have later or, or design options that I have later. This could take a day, uh, but it could take up to three weeks. It just depends on how how many decision makers you have. How long is it going to sit on the table before you call me and go, Chris? This is the one we want. Uh, now we're happy happy to make as many designs as you'd like uh, but sometimes you don't want to chase that rabbit too far down the hole and again limit your number of decision makers and this part of the process will go much faster now let's we're going to skip over um, to evaluation once you receive the sample uh, we would like you to to evaluate it and make sure it's what you want you may have to live with this thing for for 12 years uh, or your school will at least. Um, and be particular, you hand it to a seamstress, especially if there's two, three, four uh, uniform companies involved. Uh, take it to a seamstress and say, what do you think? Uh, you wanna make sure the construction is solid uh, so that it can stand the test of time. Uh, it's not many suits that have to go out there on, the, on a field and dance in them uh, in, in high, with high school students, right? Uh, sample approval, this is simple. Uh, what we try to do is get the first three steps of the process done uh, at the very beginning where we have the design uh, and we do write the construction specs and come up with that sample. We try, I, I, my favorite thing is, is if we spend your, our time wisely at the front of this, 
then we're going to get to the sample approval section and you're going to go, it's perfect, it's exactly what I want. Now, if there are minor changes, and that happens often, uh, then I could, for instance, let's say there's a line here and you want to move it to here, I can take a piece of fabric chalk and actually draw that line and then it'll go back to Sheila and Specs and she's going to make those little changes and then we're going to be good. That's not going to slow us down. Now, if, um, if there are major changes, we're probably going to have to do some more sampling, which kicks us back to the original uh, construction specs and sample construction. It may add up to four or five weeks if that happens. So again, plan for the, plan for the worst, hope for the best. Moving on, let's say the sample is perfect, you love it, then we're gonna, we're gonna do, it says contract, really that's a service order, super simple. Uh, it just tells, it writes out exactly what you want. And then the purchase order, which is what I deal with most of the time, or the payment. Uh, and then lastly, measurements. Uh, we will dive into measurements a little bit more specifically later uh, and how, how I like to do it. Um, that This could take, measurements could take a day and uh, most of the, the folks that I work with are former band directors. You can trust them to be in rehearsal. Uh, you can still have rehearsal and just say, flutes, go get measured. And it takes 30 seconds to a minute per student. It, we've got this down to a science. And again, uh, because we're, most of us are former band directors, uh, we, we can respect a rehearsal and uh, we'll be very quiet and efficient. And then from that point, once again, 180 days. Um, this is a long slide, please forgive me. Uh, I did do a little math on this. So let's say you took the worst case scenario, uh, the longest case scenario rather, on all of these options, three weeks, two weeks, five, 12, and up to 180 days. The long case scenario for you would be 340 days total if you wanted them delivered on 715, on July 15th which I highly recommend you get them on that date or before. You don't want kids, you don't, you don't want to start summer band or if you call it band camp, you don't want to, all those kids to come in to learn and then all these boxes get delivered, disrupt the learning environment and now you've got all the kids unpacking boxes and, and taking away the old uniforms and so on and so forth. You want that to be utilized as teaching time, right? So let's have them delivered on or before July 15th that means you need to begin this process on or before August 9th. Um, short case scenario, let's say you are on it and we are on it. Short case scenario, and this is still at 180 days, which is 180 days, the last part of this is worst case scenario for us. Um, we normally don't see that, but just plan for it. Short case scenario, uh, 229 days is what you'll need to get the whole entire process done. So to get them by July 15th, you need to begin by November 29th. Uh, so don't get any later than that. Uh, and then the happy medium is October 4th. If, you get, if everybody got started on October 4th, you would be my favorite people on earth. A word to the wise, don't start, don't, don't start the process at TMEA or at your, your state convention. Uh, it's a great time to tweak things or maybe start talking about the following year uh, and being the following fall in a year and a half. If you start, uh, let's say Texas folks, if you start at TMEA around Valentine's Day, you've got to get through this entire thing so fast. And man, if you know what you want, great. Uh, we will do our very best. But we, we don't want to rush the process. We want to make sure you get what you want and your community get what, gets what they need. Let's move right along. So here we're going to start talking about design preparation and this slide is going to be very short. We just simply need to know colors, logo, um, and the design, like the, the, the style that you're going for. Uh, most of this stuff, I do research before I ever even meet you. I know most of this. Uh, now that said, a lot of you, uh, for instance, I'm seeing a lot of, of uh, West Point schools start to put a little extra flair into their uniforms, and I just simply need to know that information. Uh, also, you'll see the complete design form. You've seen that on every slide down here at the bottom. Uh, you should be able to click a link there, and I'm gonna put this on the website 
uh, and have that design form easily or readily available. Um, that way you can just start there and we will get somebody on it from the beginning and then we can tweak from there. Again, we're going to talk about other design options here in a moment. Moving right along. How do the scales tip at your school? How much control, how much decision-making process, we're going back to decision-making here. You need to know the politics. Where's the money coming from? Who do you have to please? Now there's design and contest. You know, we know the simple stuff like style, logo, colors, but where is everything coming from? Where's the funding coming from? Where's your support coming from? Traditions, alumni. Uh, for instance, on the logo section, I still put a lot of logos on uniforms, but we do a tone on tone, which for example, on this black shirt, uh, I let's say it's ABC High School. Uh, I could put in a satin stitch in black, ABC High School, and then even put the logo here in black so that when you're up close to me, you can see all of that. And that may be enough to please your administration or please the board because a lot of them want to see the name of the school on the uniform but when you step back five yards that disappears completely uh, so you're still branding the school but you're not disrupting the, the design okay let's move along style so I am so lucky uh, here in uh, the DFW area to and East Texas to deal with a um, collection of, of of uniform styles. Sorry, a bird just flew by and it distracted me. Um, so there's contemporary, what I call contemporary. This is this is what we're seeing is more abstract design designs, uh, DCI, BOA, um, a lot of the um, really really um, avant-garde schools or school of thought going on. Uh, these are really fun. Now there's a lot more. There's a lot of uh, a lot of changes that can be made, and the the design you see right there, uh, done by Elise Wooster, by the way, she's incredible. Uh, this the, this particular design can be changed. You can see we can reprint so much of that for pennies on the dollar, rather than remaking the entire uniform annually, um, which is kind of a fun option. We're doing a lot of that right now. Where you know this is maybe the school colors, but next year you do a show about water, and we can actually print water on these. Uh, it's really really exciting what what these schools are doing. Uh, traditional schools. Uh, this is normally these days. Uh, the, I see this a little bit uh, still in West Texas, but uh, this is mostly colleges, universities. You know. Uh, uh, I'm not going to name any schools out, out loud, but there are several uh, universities where they may just have uh, um, uh, the school letters, and then after 10 years of that, then they'll sh just do a little tilt on it, keep the same exact design, and just shift it, um, which is, you know, they're just trying to please their alumni more than anything. They, they can't go full on. Uh, show band. So HBCU schools, they are really colorful uh, and beaming with pride and it, a lot of a lot of um, ornamentation on them. Uh, you see a Busby, the, a lot of people call it the Q-Tap hat. Most times that's really just for the drum majors, uh, but these are really fun to make. Uh, they, they, have, they take a little bit more time sometimes, so if you happen to be a show band, let's, uh, let's get talking. And then the West Point uh, military uh, out in East Texas is where I see this the most. Uh, nationwide, I'm not certain uh, how many other uh, areas carry it. Uh, I'm in, not in those areas, so. Uh, but a lot of these uniforms don't change very much at all either. It could be a change of color or a little twist here and there. Um, I actually have one school out in East Texas that has had the same exact uniform from the inception of the school. And every year they just call me to replace 30 uniforms, they give me the uniform numbers, number one, seven, 32, 47, so on and so forth. And every year they just replace 30 uniforms. They've never changed. Uh, and I think there's something really beautiful about that. And I know the community loves it. In fact, the community would flip out if we made any changes, I think. Okay, let's move on. So I mentioned earlier that there are, are options when designing. Uh, Factory visit is probably my favorite. Uh, this is where you and I will fly to Wichita, Kansas, 
and you get to spend some time in the design gallery and get to tour the factory, which is really cool. Uh, by the way, this is at no obligation to you or the school. Uh, but this is a really great way for you to get out of your office and away from the students where I know you're getting 3,000 questions a day. Uh, I used to do the job and uh, despite how much information you pour out there, they still have to ask you about it. Um, and God love them. Uh, we, sometimes we just have to step away. So this is a great way uh, and very uh, unevasive. We, we get away for just a day and a half, maybe fly in on a, a Sunday night. We spend all of a Monday uh, designing and uh, then we get up on Tuesday morning where the designs have been have matured in your mind throughout the night. Uh, I think that's very important, uh, matured throughout the night. And then we get up and, and redesign the next morning for just a little bit. Uh, we can get eight to 12 designs done. If you'll look at the left side of this slide, is, this is the most stress-free way to do it if you can get away. And I know many of you, especially those of you that uh, don't have assistants or maybe you have new assistants, I know this is difficult, but if there's a time where you have a little bit of a lull in your schedule, and I know that's difficult too, but um, if we can get up there, then we, it makes, we can decide on designs, we can tweak it, and you, you can have, you can have eight, to, eight to 12 designs done in one and a half days and really push that timeline. Uh, and again, it's really cool to see how the uniforms are done. I think that some people think that we just take fabric and buttons and throw it into a machine. Uh, yeah, I, I get a kick every time out of, I hear somebody say that something was hand sewn. My friend, it's all hand sewn. It's crazy and it's beautiful. Uh, and I'd love for you to see it. And again, at no obligation to you or your school. We will take care of everything. And then uh, stress, the stressful um, and this is a little bit of an older slide. Now that we have the design form, like I mentioned earlier at the bottom of this screen, now that we have the design form, this has made this a little bit easier. But a lot of times there's a, there's a lot of back and forth because you're teaching your classes and we are working with other customers. And so we're designing and tweaking, designing and tweaking. And we may go back and forth for some time. Um, and that goes back to the timeline slide before it could be it could take up to three weeks to get that done where we could get this done in one day and again it's really fun so it may be something you should consider okay so here are the three design options we already went over the factory visit 8 to 12 sketches no cost or obligation to you and we really just need a day and a half RTD is really neat. Uh, this is where you can, from your computer at school, and I might, e I might even come to the school, if we, especially if we have to go over fabrics, they're much better to be done in person. Um, and we get to meet with the designers online. And uh, this normally is up to two hours, and of course you're still at school, so we wanna bolt the door and put a sign out that says, hey, don't bother me right now. Uh, but we can get four to five sketches done. And then also it's our design. And this, if you'll complete the design form below, uh, this has become a lot simpler than it used to be. Uh, and we've got some incredible people designing for us now. Uh, we, can get, we start with one to three sketches. Now there's not a limit, there's not a limit, but we start with these one to three sketches and that way we can get, get an idea of your, your taste and your personality and the personality of the band and the community. So just consider these three options. There's not a wrong choice. It depends on your, your schedule and um, just how you feel about it. Sketch approval. Uh, should the students be involved? Uh, me personally, I say no. This goes back to too many decision makers. Is there a committee? Um, again, now uh, there are a couple of districts I work with that require a committee. The administration says, you need this person to sign off, this person to sign off, so on and so forth. Uh, and there, I understand why they're doing it. If you can though, if you can, make the decision maker you. Uh, and then lastly, should alumni, administration, parents be involved? It's all really the stuff, same stuff. And uh, you know, it's more involvement equals more options, means more decisions, or more discussion, which is more time. 
and I know I keep going back to the timeline, but uh, that is the that is a question I get constantly. So uh, just consider it. Drum majors. Uh, first of all, we don't really start designing drum major uniforms until we've designed the regular band. And even until we've got a sample done in some, some cases, we don't want to change two uniforms at the same time. That doesn't make any sense. Let's get the base uniform, the regular band uniform, let's get that designed first before we ever even consider what is going to happen with the drum majors. Let's go over this just real quick. Um, color changes, different gauntlets and plumes. Um, a lot of folks are not doing just uh, completely different drum major uniforms anymore. They change the plume, they change the gauntlets, they change the gloves, uh, they change just the most minor things, maybe even the shoes, maybe, um, and maybe just the bibbers, who knows. But they make these minor changes so that they're not in a, in a weird place for drum major uniforms whenever the drum majors are, are picked every year. Because they, you know, if you have a size drum major uniform, and let me say this right now, if you had, find yourself, if you're doing drum major uh, tryouts, right after you pick your drum majors, go put them in a uniform and make sure it fits. And if you need new drum major uniforms, call me right then. You really have got to, uh, because I don't want to find ourselves in a place where uh, we're back up on July 15th, August 1st, and you call me and you go, hey Chris, I screwed up. I forgot to order drum major uniforms. And I'll try and remind you every year, but uh, I know how busy you get. Uh, show bands, sometimes there's a complete redesign here. They don't relate to the band uniform. And then sometimes there's even head drum majors and assistant drum majors. I've been through that many times. Uh, military, there's little to no changes. And uh, many of the military uh, West Point East Texas uniforms are shorts for the female drum majors. I will say that we've we've learned that um, sometimes it's best if you have a, a local seamstress to go ahead and take shorts from your closet or, or trousers from your closet and just have those have those cut and hemmed on a whim if you if you forget to order drum major uniforms at the appropriate time and then just call me and we'll replace the bibbers. It's a it's kind of a hail mary move. Sample uniforms. Once you've decided on the design, uh, we will make a write the specs as we talked about in the timeline, um, and we will uh, make the uniform four to five weeks, no cost or obligation to you. Uh, now, let me say this: there is we don't go around this. Some folks want to try and skip that step. We are not going to duplicate a uniform a hundred times over without having a sample in place. We want to make sure our we've done it done our job perfectly and present that to you before we're gonna we're going to agree to make a hundred of them so um, there's there's no skipping the sample step sorry um, seamstress Taylor we talked about this earlier uh, take all of the uniforms to somebody who knows what they're talking about listen to the experts and I, I say that because I, I believe in our quality of craftsmanship and you want to have a uniform that's going to stand the test of time uh, design accuracy. Is this what you wanted to see? Sometimes it looks good on paper and it looks different when um, when you when you see it in 3D, if you will. And then how can we improve it? Um, do you just need a few changes here and there? Maybe when you put we put it on a body, you want this angle to change to some, you know, you want it this way instead of this way. Whatever. Um, that's the purpose of the sample uniform. Uniform evaluation, uh, seamstress, we talked about that a couple of times. Uh, and forgive me, I'm gonna have to zoom in here. My, these glasses are not as best, as good as they used to be. Um, maybe it's my eyes, right? <laughs> uh, how does it fit? Make sure, you, in most cases, you're gonna get a 38 regular male is the, uh, is the size you're gonna get in a sample. Make sure you put it on a kid that it fits on. If you put it on a kid it doesn't fit on, no matter what happens, it's not gonna look good. Uh, and if you need help deciding who that student is, just call me. Um, 
How does it move? How does it feel? What kind of movements does your band make? Are you a six to five up and down the field? Or are you dancing on the field? Are you rolling around on the ground sometimes? I've seen that happen several times. We need to make sure the uniform works well. And then does it pop? How does it look at different distances? Uh, also, and I don't think this is on the slides, I've had several customers take the uniform at night, put it on the appropriate student, put them on the 50 yard line and pop the stadium lights on. Um, consider that. It does look different at night than it does during the day. How many to order? This is a tricky one. Is your program expanding? What's happening down at the middle school? You're not going to want to do fill-ins every year. Fill-ins, uh, fill-in uniform, I've, I've mentioned a few times but not explained it. A fill-in uniform is the same uniform you have, but you, maybe you need 10 more. We do it all the time. It'll look exact, not a problem, but it will be more expensive. So if your program is expanding, you've got 100 kids in the band program now, but you've got an incredible middle school band director now, and those the numbers are climbing, then let's go ahead and make 150, 175. As long as you can prove to the administration, and I have ways that I can help you with that. Uh, I used to do this all the time for my own program. So, and, and we'll do it in a logical way. We're not gonna try and pull the wool over anybody's eyes. Uh, that'll get you nowhere very fast. But if we, can, if we can make a case that your program is expanding, let's go ahead and get more than you think you're going to need. Um, Recruiting, predictable sizing and growth patterns, I'm just kind of reading this out, and economic, um, students of all sizes and backgrounds. Growth could be a little bit more erratic and, and uh, unpredictable. For example, if you are in an area, uh, let's say, well, well, where I used to teach in Frisco, uh, where you've got, it, you've got the school placed and there's empty fields all around you, it's going to be difficult to predict where and we're seeing this in Dallas a lot where all the kids are coming from and kids in a, from different regions fit differently so we're gonna have to look at that and also decide well how many are we need to put in your closet okay so are you required to go through the bid process uh, this is where construction specs may be required which again we is one it is the first thing that's done when i request the sample uniform i can get those to you uh, more than likely you're not you're not going to care to read these this is more an in-house thing but we may want to go ahead and put it in a binder for you um, know the date of the bid or the board meeting uh, sometimes these pop up um, many times you have to put your put your information on the agenda a month in advance know that and know that a board meeting in most cases happens once a month if you have to go through this process be prepared because you don't want that timeline to extend another month because of, of not knowing that information so i would if if you're planning on doing this in the near future make sure you know how you're going to have to go through the purchasing process um, there are so many buying cooperatives out there now where you just get to pick the uniform company you want which is great but if you have to go through this process, know it and let's plan ahead. Scheduling measurements. Uh, let's do this immediately after the contract is awarded. Um, if a representative does it, uh, this is what we prefer. Uh, 30 seconds per student uh, because our accuracy is gonna be higher. We do this every day. Uh, the, the, we do, we can have parents do it. I know some schools, uh, there are a few schools in the country that are still not allowing uh, folks in the building. And there are folk, I know some of the students are probably a little I, apprehensive. Uh, I, see, I see students even where it's optional. I'm sure a lot of yours are still wearing masks and getting up into their face a little bit and taking measurements. Um, maybe they're uncomfortable with it and they'd rather have the parents do it. I can make a video on that. In fact, there are several on the measurements we need. Um, so that is an option. And then also, we could just do stock sizing. Um, now, these measurements are all gonna turn into stock sizing. Let me, let me say that. Those measurements are not exact to that student. We're taking, we're trying to paint a picture of how your kids fit in your area. Kind of like we talked about in the, in the uh, I think two slides ago. We're trying to paint a picture of, of 
are, are your kids, <laughs> forgive me for saying it, but there are some, some areas of the United States where the kids are built a little bit more blocky. Uh, there are some areas of the United States where kids are, are, are shorter, are taller and skinnier. It is just what it is, and we need to figure out, we need to figure out how your program fits. Um, now, if you happen to have really great information, and maybe you've got 200 kids in your unit, in your band program, and you've got 250 uniforms, and you don't have any sizing issues, and in fact it works perfectly, then we'll just recreate the sizes all over again and make that easy. Um, but this is a conversation. Uh, measurements and uh, sizing is more of an art form when you're trying to do sizing for, for students that are 12 years from now, you know, the kids that you are barely born, um, we're trying to size those kids now, so it gets a little tricky, uh, but talk to any of the reps and we can help you through this. Okay, so this is just a fun slide. Uh, this is, these are the final things to get to order and delivery. We need the service agreement done, so we need to know exactly broken out between regular band uniforms, uh, band, drum majors. We need the measurements. Uh, we need the sample. We need all of that returned, even the plume and the garment bag. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, we don't move forward until everything's returned. So when you get that sample, make sure you don't let the kids play with it and run off with certain parts, because if you do, we're gonna have to sample it again. Uh, we don't do anything without having these things back in house. Um, and we didn't make two samples, uh, and we like that sample to go through the line with the seamstresses so they can, they can look at what they're sewing and they can look up and make sure it is exactly identical to what you approved. Uh, from the time that I have the purchase order uh, or payment and all of those other items, it's up to 180 days. Guidance. Uh, this is what we're here for, folks. Um, we want we are here to walk you through the entire process from design to delivery uh, post delivery assistance uh, I I help programs out all the time um, afterwards just um, just know that that's what we're here for we are uh, especially for my company we are director's assistant I named it that 10 years ago as more of a concierge service especially for the rural band programs that don't have an assistant uh, so if you need our help just let us know uh, and I encourage you to challenge us. I hope this has been helpful and I hope that it's not been too distracting with the birds, planes, and, and kids flying around. Uh, not the kids, of course. Uh, here is my contact information. Again, my name is Chris Walls. Uh, that is my line to my office. If my staff or myself cannot get to the phone, we have a 24-7 answering service that will type your information out into an email to us. Uh, you can also text this number and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We are here to help. Uh, we love this job and we started this company to assist you. So anything you need, just let us know. Hope you're having a wonderful day and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks so much.